in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about context window, vectorized databases, and RAG or retrieval augmented generation. Again, we're not going to get too technical on this because I think some of the positive feedback I've received from you guys on previous videos, either in the one-on-ones or some of the messages I've received is that you guys really like the fact that I'll take something in either in a project or a video and, you know, just make it as simple to understand as possible. And in you either making that project or walking through that video, you're then able to understand more complex videos or more complex tutorials from other creators. And basically that some of these videos have helped you, you know, kind of expand your skill base in terms of bridging that gap from starting with DC stuff and then tackling the more complex, maybe more frustrating projects. So for these concepts, which you're going to keep seeing if you plan on working with AI in the future, or especially if you're going to keep working with agents or agent frameworks, this is an analogy that personally helped me get a better grasp on these concepts. And I hope it will help you as you decide to move forward, either making more complex projects, or maybe you decide you want to study these topics more in depth. But when it comes to learning new things, I think it's best to start with the simplest explanation and then move down to the detail. So for these three scenarios, we're going to consider the prompt, I want a burger. And of course, the output for each one of those prompts is indeed a burger. So for the first scenario, let's think of, you know, just a cookout at the park or at the backyard. If you tell the person that you want a burger, you know, they're kind of doing this for free. They're not too invested in doing all this. You know, they kind of got stuck with this responsibility. So they're going to give you just that. They're going to get two buns. They're going to cook the patty and they're going to serve it to you on a plate just like that. No toppings, no ketchup, nothing. Because again, that is what you asked for, a burger, and that's what you got. In this same format, whenever you prompt an LLM only with the input that you're giving it, that's the only part that you're using for context. I'm sure you've heard from people before. Maybe they used ChatGPT and they said, you know what, the responses weren't that good. It wasn't that great. But on the other hand, you've had a great experience with it. You're using it to ask all these questions and learn all these new things. Now, if you've seen any of these people use ChatGPT or some of these LLMs that weren't too amazed by them, it probably was because they weren't using very good prompts for it. And like the old adage goes, garbage in, garbage out. You give it a crappy generic prompt, you're probably going to get a very generic response as well. But this doesn't mean that using only your input as the context for the LLM whenever you're making your query, that doesn't mean that you can't get a good response. Same thing like, you know, asking your friend or, you know, your brother-in-law or whatever who's making the burgers. If you give them more details, you say, I'd like no tomatoes, I'd like only mayo, I like cheese, you know, they'll probably do it and they'll probably do a pretty darn good job about it. But the emphasis is going to be on the details. So now let's consider the second scenario, right? You go to a fast food restaurant and you place an order. Same prompt. You want a burger and for the output of course you're gonna get a burger now because this is a restaurant you're still gonna get a pretty decent burger right again you didn't specify what kind of burger you wanted what kind of combo and you know the people working fast food they're busy they don't have they don't have all the time in the world to ask you all these questions so maybe they just put a number one for your order and that's what you end up getting so i had to double check this but yes the number one in mcdonald's is a big mac so even if you just said i want a burger and you ended up with a big mac without specifying you know, how many patties you wanted, what kind of toppings you wanted, how many buns. You didn't even say that you wanted fries. Even with a simple prompt, you still got a pretty good burger, right? Definitely much better than just getting two buns and a patty like you did in the first scenario. And in this scenario, it's similar to the response you would get or the output you would receive if you leveraged a vectorized database for your responses. Because the reason why you ended up with a Big Mac, even though you didn't specify the burger type, in the database that is basically the McDonald's menu, through the association in the word burger from your prompt and the burgers that are listed in the McDonald's menu, which is in your vectorized database, Getting the output of a Big Mac is a pretty valid response. And in terms of output quality, or I guess burger quality, a way better response than the first one. So now we come to the third and last scenario, which is when you order from a chef. Now this chef, when you walk up in order to him, you know, at the end of the day, this is his business, this is his food truck, his restaurant. So he's very much invested in providing the best quality food or the best quality burger in this case for you. So you walk up to him and you say, I want a burger. Now what's going to happen is because he wants to serve you the best burger, he's going to ask you, do you want tomatoes on that? How many patties would you like? How would you like it cooked? Medium, well done. Would you like cheese? Would you like bacon? Would you like avocado? He's probably going to ask you as many questions as he needs in order to provide you with the best quality burger so you can have the best experience. Once he gets this information from you, he's then going to pick from the menu that he has, which is kind of like his own custom menu, and he's going to make you the best burger that you've ever had. And even though you just said, I want a burger, because of that information retrieval that was performed, the output's going to be a burger that's way better than just the patties and the buns, definitely way better than a Big Mac, 
and it's still going to be directly related to your original request. And this is how retrieval augmented generation works. Similar to when you leverage a vectorized database with your LLM, with RAG, you're going to retrieve data from your vectorized database, and it's going to use this data not just to find connections between your original prompt and the data that's stored in the database, but rather to generate a more contextually expanded prompt for you. Just like how we said in this scenario where you're ordering the food and the chef is asking all these questions, even though you originally just said, I want a burger, once the conversation was said and done, because of all those questions that were asked, really your prompt was, I want a burger with no tomatoes, with pickles, with, you know, buttery buns and extra onions or whatever. But the prompt at the end that was used to make your burger was a lot more contextually specific than just the original one, which was just, I want a burger. And because of this process, you ended up with the best burger from the other two options. And that pretty much covers our lesson for today. Let me know in the comments if you guys have tried implementing a vectorized database in your projects or tried creating an RAG app. I'd really like to hear how implementing this has helped improve your projects. If you guys have any questions about your AI projects, whether it's a personal project or one that you're trying to apply to your business, I'm gonna leave a link in the description where you can book a one-on-one -on -one video call with me completely free. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.